Hey Geeks, Tim Tibbetts here with MajorGeeks.com. Today we're going to talk about how to disable or enable SysMain, previously known as Prefetch, previously known as Superfetch, and now it is SysMain in the newer builds of Windows 10. We can't get into this at all without discussing, feel free to read the article, that it's heavily debated, but here's a simple fact of the matter. It keeps track of how you use your computer. It keeps programs where you left off in memory so that they can open faster. It makes your computer boot and run faster. Unless you've got no memory or you're having some problems with really high CPU usage, but most of those days are gone, there's really no reason to disable it. So there you go. I think, I'm just guessing, they renamed it to SysMain because they wanted to get over people arguing whether Superfetch needed to be enabled or not. So now there's a different name, but people are slowly catching on to the new name. If you want to play around with it or just check to see if it's enabled, just start your services up. And that's with your Windows key plus R and do services dot msc and as mentioned the new name is sysmain and we'll just scroll right down there alphabetical right there now you can double click that and you should be running and you should be automatic you have options here you can do it manually you can disable it right there that'll shut it off and then you hit stop you wait until it's done and from here on out your service is now disabled and it will not run unless you come back so there you go a couple other things to think about feel free to debate in the comments here on major geeks or in the YouTube comment section I don't think there's much to debate unless you're running a really old computer and you're low on memory and you're seeing that like I said the high CPU spikes there's also down below in this guide how to use the command prompt or PowerShell to enable or disable it, which can actually be a little bit faster. I'm a big fan of playing around with PowerShell and the command prompt. And finally, if you've got a slow computer and you're looking at Superfetch or SysMain, thinking that maybe it's one of the things that's going to improve your computers, one more thing you can do besides RAM, and that is to consider an SSD drive. My computer boots in 10 seconds. I don't mean it boots in 10 seconds. I mean it boots usable starting up my apps in 10 seconds. The hard drive is the biggest bottleneck in your computer. It is all the horsepower in the world, all the memory in the world is not going to do you any good if you have a hard drive sitting in there It's old school that just doesn't do the job. There's a couple different ones. There's a link here. You feel free to click on it and we actually get a commission if you buy anything there. So just to be uh, forward with you and they're very small and they've gotten really, really cheap. I use Western Digital. I found their prices are good and from Western Digital or Major Geeks, you can get the Western Digital data migration software so basically you disconnect say your CD drive or what, just plug in another drive start the software it will see your old operating system copy it to the new one unplug your old hard drive and boot your computer use your other hard drive for a backup I mean pretty crazy right so you know you're sitting around with a one terabyte hard drive now you got a gigantic backup you format you're good to go my newer computer has one like this can you imagine it's the size of a memory chip now it's been like that for years of course but they're also coming down in price it's a one terabyte and it's under just under a hundred dollars it's ridiculous so if you can squeeze out the hundred dollars if not consider memory you might want to look at some apps on major geeks as well we have memory monitoring tools stuff like that let's see if i can find you real quick what do I got here? We got so much stuff here. System tools, maybe monitoring. And a lot of these monitoring memory tools. So you can look at some of those in monitoring. So before you, I hit the wrong button. Monitoring. there, And you can find some stuff. And they usually just click here by popularity. Same with here. And you can find programs probably under monitoring where you can kind of watch your memory. And you could also consider using Task Manager. So that might work as well. And possibly, whoops, hit the wrong one. And you can find some different details here now where you can see where your memory is being used. You might be able to solve a problem with both CPU and memory usage by finding out who's using it up. As you can see, my Microsoft Edge is currently sucking down 9% CPU and 478 megs. That's nothing. Uh, that's what you have a CPU for is to use it. That's what you have a memory for is to use it. That's always been my opinion. If you run out, that's a different problem, but that's what it's there for. I got 32 gigs in this machine, so 493 megs. I could run another couple hundred instances of this and probably not notice it. But just keep an eye out. Typically, your apps that are running where you usually find where you're losing some of your memory or your CPU usage, it's fairly rare -er to find them under a background process with Windows. You'll see some stuff, but you can see the numbers relatively small all the way down the board. But so always start out here where it says apps and see if you can find that you're having a CPU problem. If you're not, 
and you're not having a memory problem, get that SSD hard drive. I swear you'll thank me later. Thanks, as always, for watching. See you soon.